What's going on guys? Welcome back. Thanks for watching. As you can probably tell, I am getting sick. So I'm going to try not to talk quite as much today. One, because I sound super annoying right now. And two, because I don't want to lose my voice. Anyway, today we are going to be testing two of the most common self-defense firearms to see which one self-defends better. And to be honest, I can't believe we have not done this video yet. But today we are comparing a self-defense rifle versus a self-defense shotgun. I love that sound. So obviously these two firearms shoot very different cartridges. The rifle we're using is the AR-15, which shoots the 5.56 or the 223. Just a little 22 caliber bullet. The shotguns we're using are 12 gauge. This is a 12 gauge slug, which is about a 72 caliber bullet. So more than three times the size and probably 10 times the weight of the 5.56. If you looked at these two side by side, the shotgun shell would appear to be several times bigger and probably way more effective. However, that's not always necessarily true. So shotguns get their lethality from size and weight. Huge projectiles going relatively slow and they dump a lot of energy on target because again, it's three fourths of an inch in diameter and several hundred grains. Rifles on the other hand, like our 5.56 for instance, are also very effective despite the fact that it is a much smaller projectile. And the reason for that is velocity. This is going about three times faster than the 12 gauge shotgun, which equals a lot more energy on target. So rifles utilize smaller, faster projectiles and shotguns utilize bigger, slower projectiles. And today, I wanna to compare the two and see which one is actually more effective. Let's do it. All right, let's start on a couple pumpkins. Get away from me, bruh. I'm not scared of bees, I promise. I'm a grown man. All right, let's go ahead and start on a couple pumpkins. These are pretty hollow, so they're not gonna explode or nothing like that, but I wanna see the size difference on what's actually going into the target. So, starting with the rifle. 5.56, five, obviously. And the double out buckshot from the 12 gauge shotgun. <laughs> Such a big difference. All right, that is the pumpkin that we shot with the rifle. You can see that little 22 caliber entrance hole on the back. We have a slightly bigger exit hole but really not too impressive. And then this <laughs> is the pumpkin that we shot with the 12 gauge, and that looks dang near like a jack-o'-lantern at this point. So you can see all nine of those pellets hit the pumpkin, probably an eight to 10 inch spread. And then we got something pretty similar on the back. So if you looked at these two side by side, it would appear that this one is 10 times more effective than this one. But as I think we'll see in a little bit, the velocity of the rifle makes it more effective than you would think. Hey guys, before we go any further, I wanna take just a minute to thank our sponsor for today's video, Live Free Armory. Most recently, they have released the brand new cutting edge Apollo 11 nine millimeter pistola which is the one we're gonna talk about today. The Apollo 11 is a marvel of firearm engineering that seamlessly blends timeless design with modern innovation to deliver unmatched performance and reliability. It features a match grade 4.9 inch bushingless bull barrel that is honed and rifle cut for unparalleled accuracy. And every component of this pistol is hand fitted for optimal performance. And since personalization is key, the Apollo 11 offers a wide range of customization options. It has accessory rails for attaching stuff and the slide already comes cut from the factory so you can mount an optic without using cumbersome plates or adapters. Experience the pinnacle of handgun craftsmanship with the Apollo 11 and again I want to thank Live Free Armory for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. Well obviously every fall we shoot pumpkins. I love shooting pumpkins but because they're pretty much hollow they just don't react enough when you shoot them so I want to try something different. We 
They got an entire two liter in that pumpkin. Let's try that. All right, let's try the 556 five, first. See if our soda filled pumpkins make any difference. Oh! And the 12 gauge shotgun. I guess we'll just go ahead and use buckshot for this as well. Not really sure if the ammo will make a difference, but. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, it's kind of hard to tell which one was more impressive because the shotgun obviously moves your eyes off the target a lot more than the rifle does. But to me, it looked like the 5.56 might have been a little more dramatic. Either way, when you look at the size difference between a 223 and a double lot buckshot 12 gauge shell, it's insane that they're even in the same ballpark. But they definitely were. Now I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Mark who gave me this idea to fill pumpkins with soda. It definitely worked, dude. That was epic. And again, that is all velocity. When you see the little 22 caliber hole that a 5.56 makes, it can kind of be deceiving. But when it actually hits liquid or matter going 3,000 feet per second, the results are dramatic. That was awesome. So we have now established that the rifle bullet does not cause quite as much damage on impact. But with velocity, there are several advantages. Most of you probably already know what's gonna happen, but let's go ahead and shoot some body armor. We'll go ahead and start with the 223. This is just a regular 55 grain bullet. Well, I heard it hit the steel on the other side, so I kind of gave it away. <laughs> 556 entrance hole is right there. That one is from a previous video. And on the back, clear as day, there is an exit hole. Plus, I heard it hit that steel plate. <laughs> and I know a lot of you are just shocked by this result, but I try to film these videos as if some people watching might not know this stuff yet. So let's try the shotgun and the double lot buckshot. Like I said, there's a lot of different shotgun loads we could use, but I feel like double lot buckshot is probably the most common for self-defense. So that's what we're sticking with for most of the video. I don't think that went through based off how it launched the trash can off the table. <laughs> this is kind of stuck in the metal there. So let me try to dig it out. All right. Well, that was probably not the best idea. That was kind of a nightmare to get out of there, but you can tell just by how puffed up that thing is that it did stop those double lot buckshot pellets. These little tears on the back are just where it was snagged on the sharp metal edges of the trash can. But you can clearly see there are no exit holes from the actual buckshot. So it stopped it. And it's pretty much common knowledge that 3A body armor will stop every shotgun load that I'm aware of. There might be some that are specifically designed to defeat body armor, but buckshot, slugs, birdshot, stuff like that, level 3A armor will stop it. And as we saw, it will not stop a 5.56. Five, not even close. So that's the advantage of a bullet going 3,000 feet per second. And one more benefit of the shotgun that I wanted to touch on is the variety of ammo. They're kind of in a league of their own because there's no other firearm that I can think of that has that big of an ammo selection. You can really dial in a shotgun to do exactly what you want. AR-15s and other rifles don't have that advantage. All right, guys, now it's time for the most important part of the video, the self-defense test on our ballistic dummy lab heads. I have two of these things out here. We're gonna hit one with the rifle, one with the shotgun, and we'll see what the difference actually is. We'll go ahead and start with the rifle. For this test, we're gonna use the Black Hills 77 grain OTM. This is a very well-known 5.56. It's actually the round that unalived Osama bin Laden. Allegedly, so it's a good one. I might double tap him just to make it interesting. Let's see what it does. Oh my goodness.
That was a lot more dramatic than I expected. All right, well, you can clearly see we've got quite a bit of damage here. So on the back, or the inside of the forehead, I should say, you can see the entrance hole right there. So it went through probably just above the bridge of the nose, right in between the eyes. Perfect shot, if you ask me. And it looked like most of this damage was done on the first round. The second one did eject the brain, I guess you would call it. But most of that damage was done on the first round and it just completely opened up that entire ballistic dummy head. And then obviously going through there, we have a ton of carnage. It doesn't look like there's any bullet fragments left in the ballistic shell. So I assume most of it did pass all the way through but there's your result, just a complete obliteration of that ballistic dummy head. And just to give you an idea of how gnarly that was, we have a big piece of the skull right here, probably 20 feet away from our table, at least. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it would be impressive. Like I said, the 5.56 is definitely a good self-defense round, but I did not think it would just completely open the ballistic dummy head up like that. Wow. So I did bring two ballistic dummy heads out here. I've got the other one right there in that box. And these things take like three weeks to get here. I've got more on the way, but they won't be here for a couple weeks. And I got to thinking, I just shot a ballistic dummy head like two weeks ago with a 12 gauge shotgun using double lot buckshot. It was in the Benelli M4 video, I believe. And I would hate to use this one when I could use it for another video, especially since we already have the footage that we need. So I might just run that footage in this video and use that for our 12 gauge shotgun test because it's literally the exact same thing I was gonna do today anyway. In fact, I even double tapped the head just like I did with the AR-15. I actually hit it three times, but after the second shot, there was pretty much nothing left. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that footage here and you can see what the 12 gauge shotgun did. And since this is a self-defense test, we're gonna use double up buckshot going 1300 feet per second. I've got five rounds in it. I have a feeling there won't be too much left after the first two or three, but let's see how long he lasts. <laughs> so the first one might've went a little bit low. I can't tell, I am very close to the target, uh, but that right there is a perfect example of why we usually only need one shot from a shotgun because they just obliterate stuff. The first one hit a little bit low, right to the face, and then the second one just completely removed his head, basically. <laughs> There's a swarm of bees over here, I'm not sure why, but you can see some of that damage that we have on the ballistic shell. The entire face is pretty much gone, and we even have some exit holes right there on the back of the ballistic shell, so. He's not feeling too well after that one. So you saw what the 12 gauge shotgun did, and honestly, I don't think there is as much of a difference as most people would expect. I think the shotgun did do like more damage going in, the front, the back, the top, everything was pretty much gone. Whereas with the rifle, it was just the back that was completely gone. But both of these would be 100% lethal on a ballistic demi head. Of course, we would never talk about real life. I will say on a torso, I think buckshot does have an advantage because it spreads and you're more likely to hit one of the vitals. But on a head, unless you barely just graze it, both of these are gonna be 100% lethal. All right, boys and girls, I hope y'all enjoyed our little shotgun versus rifle comparison today. As with all these videos, it just comes down to personal preference. I personally love 
the AR-15. The ease of use, maneuverability, lightweight, capacity, low recoil, there's a reason the AR is the most popular rifle in the country. And as we saw today, they're also very effective. So if I had to choose between the AR and the 12 gauge right now, I would definitely pick the AR-15. But you really can't argue that within that holy shit range, there's probably nothing more effective than a 12 gauge with double up buckshot. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you use either one of these as your bedside guns, tell me all about it down there. I would be glad to hear from you. If you like the video, please hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.